Looks like Eileen left a note for me here. Hi, Kat. Since it's such a long drive, I set the alarm so you won't miss the funeral. Thank me later, E. Very well. <clears throat> the same wind, my dear. The same wind. Shook the walls of Jericho. Dried your tears. No lead to be found. No trust, nor joy. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone beyond. I am Baby Noobcakes. Ha! Psych! This is Mary Loon, and this is the Twitch Prime free game reviews for March and April. And in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at two of the April and March free games, both from Cliffside Games. Kathy Rain, A Detective is Born, and Whispers of a Machine. Baby Noobcakes captured the footage for Kathy Rain, and I captured the footage for Whispers of a Machine, but I also played through Kathy Rain. But now, let's attempt to answer the question, as two of the free games of the past two months, were they worth it? Narrative. In Kathy Rain, A Detective is Born, you play as the eponymous character Kathy Rain, a college sophomore majoring in journalism in the mid-1990s. She's a punk rock chick with the sick 1976 chopper bike that she restored herself, and lives in a dorm with her roommate, Eileen Summers, who loves helping almost as much as she loves computers. Kathy learns that her grandfather, Joseph Rain, recently passed away, so she reluctantly goes back to her hometown of Conwell Springs to attend his funeral. Once there, she reconnects with her grandmother, and learns that there is much more to her grandfather's life and death than she initially suspected. The mystery unravels and grows to draw in the people around town. Their secrets, personal and paranormal, are the keys to solving the mystery of her grandfather's death. You know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? He had a stroke in the woods, that's what happened. Whispers of a Machine is set in a post-AI future. You play as Vera England, a cybernetically augmented special agent dispatched to the town of Nordsund. As part of her training, Vera has recently taken the blue, which means she has received an injection of an advanced nano-substance that has given her several superhuman abilities that can adapt to her psychological mindset. Vera arrives in town to investigate one murder, but that quickly becomes two, and then three. Very quickly, it becomes apparent that the technology of the past still affects the present. Opposing ideologies clash, and some big philosophical questions create quandaries for Vera and the player. Both games are mysteries, so I can't say too much more about them without spoiling them. But twists and turns are in store for the player. Mechanics Kathy Rain and Whispers of a Machine are point-and-click mystery games, so the gameplay is pretty straightforward. You can combine some items and use others to interact with NPCs and the environment. You typically don't have a time limit on anything, and you can almost always go back to previous places to see if you missed anything. And in classic point-and-click fashion, you can attempt to use just about every item in any scenario. Similarly, most of the items don't do anything unless you're in the correct place, but it will be up to you, the player, to use your big ol' brain to figure out the correct solution. In Kathy Rain, sometimes it was easy to miss clickable parts of the background. Both Baby Noob Cakes and I both got lost in a few parts before we finally found the right thing to click or the right combination of items. There are a few times when you will use a computer to edit images and audio evidence, but in general it's up to your puzzle-solving skills to connect the dots. Whispers of the Machine, on the other hand, while it's similar in its gameplay and mechanics, has a few additions. You can press the spacebar to see all the clickable items in a room, which is a big upgrade from Kathy Rain's occasional blind clicking. And here, Vera starts with three basic abilities beyond those of your average person. The first is the forensic scanner, which allows Vera to scan the area and find genetic information, footprints, and other hidden data. You also have a biometric analyzer, which you can use to read people's biorhythm patterns to detect emotional anomalies in their statements. You have no idea, man. I think you know more. Now would be the time to tell me. The last is the muscle boost, which briefly increases Vera's natural strength to give her the ability to open stuck doors and the like. Okay, the yellow cable is disconnected now. You have three possible paths you can take. Empathetic, assertive, and analytical. After experimenting with the different options, I chose to take the empathetic route for this playthrough. Whichever path you choose determines what upgrades you'll get from your blue as the game progresses. Whispers of a Machine has more options and more going on than Kathy Rain, 
which extended my playtime by a few hours. I floundered with some puzzles, but also spent way more time than I needed scanning all of the things and analyzing nearly everyone's biorhythms when I spoke to them. So this does have the potential to bog down the game a little bit more, depending on your playstyle. Art style. Both games have a charming, hand-drawn pixel art style. The character models and art are realistic and expressive. Their faces change to fit their moods in dialogue, and you can see their personalities in their faces. Backgrounds feel lived in and are generally easy to navigate. Kathy Rain's Conwell Springs is a sleepy small town with some strange residents and even stranger secrets. Some places are warm and comforting, while others are eerie and otherworldly. I also enjoyed using the mid-1990s computers in the dorm room and elsewhere. Anyone who grew up in the 90s will enjoy this blast from the past. Whispers of a Machine has a gray utilitarian setting, but there are sparks of color and life throughout. Nordic runes dot the landscape on banners and flags. Much of the town is run down and broken, and repaired with metal sheets and scavenged parts. A small local greenhouse. Sound. Both games have somber, unobtrusive music and sound effects that don't overtake the gameplay. Each game also has over 4,000 lines of dialogue with full English voice acting. Characters sound unique and realistic. Hey, uh, Kathy, wait. What? Do you eat foot? I, I mean, food? Absolutely not. I feed on human misery. I, uh... What do you think of this cocky person? Well, uh, the nickname makes me think of, uh, you know, boy parts. <laughs> And you call yourself a Christian. Not sure where those doors lead. I should go check it out. Kathy Rain's score is reminiscent of the music of Silent Hill and Twin Peaks. Some places have a creepy, tense music backing them that made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Other tracks have that nice grungy feel of the 90s. Whispers of a Machine has a moody, futuristic sound to it. The ambient sounds are subtle and industrial, fitting the everyday business of the town of Nordsund. Vera's augmentations make mysterious, futuristic sounds that fit their function. Vera's forensic scanner hums and blips, and her biorhythm analyzer pulses along with her subject's hey, biorhythms. I'm Vera Anglin, special agent. Oh, I heard about you. I'm Rolf, the plant master of- Replayability. Kathy Rain will last you about five and a half to six hours, while Whispers of a Machine will last you about six and a half to eight hours. Kathy Rain, though, has limited replayability. Yeah. There are different choices you can make that affect the narrative, but really there's only one ending. The ending itself is open-ended and rather dreamy, though. Whispers of a Machine's three main paths that Vera can take to solve the murders and advance her augmentations, as well as multiple endings, give enough reasons to come back to Whispers of a Machine a few times. You can still breathe the air and feel your heart beating. My opinion. I enjoyed Kathy Rain, A Detective is Born. I love a good mystery and a creepy small town with paranormal underpinnings. Kathy herself has some rough edges, but I grew to really like her. Let's go of me. God. <laughs> it had some spooky paranormal flavor to it, which I love. It was a surprisingly relaxing game to play, even with the dark themes. I also had fun with Whispers of a Machine, and I do plan to go back and explore some of the alternate paths that I didn't take on my first go around. Whispers of a Machine presents some big concepts and asks some big questions, but only really addresses them in the limited scope of Vera's investigation. It was a little disappointing, but it did leave me wanting to see more of the world that the game presented. Overall, both games feel like tiny glimpses into much larger, overarching stories. It feels like there has been a huge amount of world building and lore created for each game, 
but you only get to see a small part of each world. I would have liked to experience more than I did. I don't know if Clifftop Games plans to explore either game's world any further, but there are plenty of directions that the team could take either of them. They are currently working on a game simply titled Project 3, tentatively due to come out sometime in 2021. So we'll see. What am I doing again? Is it worth it? Hmm, this might be tough. For some people, these two relatively cheap games that might last you six to eight hours each may not feel like a good deal for a Twitch Prime free game, but it depends on what you value in a game. If you like story-heavy games, mysteries, and especially point-and-click adventures, these games are right up your alley. Even though at this point they aren't free anymore, each game is about $15. One of the benefits of both games, but also one of the drawbacks, are the system requirements. I don't think there's a PC that still runs today that couldn't play either game. However, there's no way to full screen the games, which could be a bummer for some people. Sure Between the spooky paranormal mystery of Kathy Rain, the future noir mood of Whispers of a Machine, the low time investment for both, and the love and care paid to them by the game developers, both of these games were worth it to me. But maybe that's for you to decide. Whether you agree or disagree with my judgment, get at me, actually, get at baby noobcakes in the comments. Let me know what you think, and let's discuss if these games were worth it or not. Also, don't forget to go to the Twitch app and download your free games every month, because hey, they're free, and sometimes you'll end up with a few gems. Replica of prospecting, surveying, and defense robot, courtesy of Nordson Museum. Thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you later.